Hi, this is Shekhar Srinivasan for Prolet Site. In this module, we shall understand one of the powerful API provided by the servlets called as filters. We shall understand what filters is, why do we need filters in servlets, life cycle of filters and how to add filters to the servlet application practically. Now, let us understand what is filters. In a simple non-technical words, to understand, we use the term filters regularly in our day-to-day -day life. The most common usage of the word filters is while filling the water from a tap. If we fill the water directly from the tap, then there will be some additional impurities that will come along with the water. So we use filters to filter the unwanted impurities coming from the tap and we will take only the purified water which is required. In simple terms, using servlets filters, we can stop the request and we can modify the request from the client before the request access the backend resources and also using filters, we can manipulate the response from the server before it reaches to the client. Now let us understand more in detail. It is a new feature introduced in Servlets 2.3 specification and originally it is a part of the J2EE 2.3 specification and also available in the current Java EE specification. Application servers have provided this particular feature in the past but not in a standardized way. So the use of servlet filters allow us to replace something called as servlet chaining or chaining servlets where servlet chaining means one servlet calling the other servlet where the logic needs to be modified at the normal process of a request response chain. So what is servlet filters? Technically speaking, a servlet filter is a small amount of code that executes before or after serving up a web resource. A servlet filter does not create its own response, but it can manipulate a servlet request or a servlet response. Filters follows the decorator design pattern. It dynamically extends the servlet behavior without adding a servlet code or necessarily extending the servlet source code. We can map one filter to any number of web resources and also Many filters can map to one web resource. Whenever the request is given, then it will be sent to the servlet filter where the code for pre-process the request will be written and then it will be submitted to the servlet. For example, let us assume that we have three servlets, servlet 1, servlet 2 and servlet 3 and also three filters, filter 1, filter 2 and filter 3. Now, let us say servlet 1 is mapped with filter 1 and filter 2 and servlet 2 is mapped with filter 1, filter 2 and filter 3 and servlet 3 is mapped with filter 3. So, whenever the client sends a request to the servlet 1, then the request will be first passed to the filter 1 and then a request will be given to the filter 2 and once the processing is done, then the request will be submitted to the servlet for processing and after the servlet has processed, then the response will be given to the filter 2 and then it will be passed to filter 1 and finally from filter 1 the response will be given to the client and whenever the client sends a request for the servlet 2 then the request will be passed to the filter 1, filter 2 and then filter 3. After processing the code present in all the three filters the request will be given to the servlet 2 for processing and then the response will also be passed across all the three filters and the response will be given to the client and whenever the client sends a request for the servlet 3 then filter 3 alone will be processed and then the request will be given to the servlet 3 and once the processing is done then the response will be given to the client. Once we have an idea on what is servlet filters, 
the next question comes to our mind is why we need a servlet filter a filter can perform application task unrelated to the usual operation of the servlet moving a task from a servlet to a filter gives us the ability to reuse this filter without rebuilding the application servlet filters are applied by configuration settings rather than by changing the java code that is the original java source of the servlet to which the filter would be applied by using the filter interface we can implement a task as a filter allowing to enable or disable the task without rebuilding the entire applications filters default nature is they can be chained together filters have initialization parameters so behavior can be parameterized and controlled through the deployment descriptor filters have the access to the servlet request so they can manipulate the headers they can add objects to the request attributes they can add objects to the session filters also have the access to the servlet context and all the resources which are accessed by the servlet once we have an idea on what servlet filter is and why we need a servlet filter now let us understand where we can use the servlet filters using the filters we can record all the incoming request log the ip addresses of the computers from which the request originates conversions data compressions encryption and decryptions input validations authentication and authorizations audit access to sensitive resources email system administrators on every application error we could compress the response to reduce overall bandwidth to make the application to perform better in the next clip we shall understand the servlet filters life cycle and servlet filter methods